this is the Olympic Stadium in Munich. There could be no better place for the man they call the Kaiser to celebrate his 50th birthday. His party guests have come from all over the world, and their former teammates and rivals, but above all, friends. He was a very elegant player. He simply had everything that you need to be a good footballer. I always admired him. His patience and calmness and his fantastic skills put him in a class of his own. Franz always let the ball do the talking for him. Franz Beckenbauer is everything. No adjective would be enough to describe what Franz Beckenbauer means to all of us. Not only to his friends, but even to those who only admired his great football. Franz Beckenbauer's first team was Munich 1906, situated within the working class area of Munich Giesingen, where Franz was brought up. The football pitch was just opposite his house. In those days, he used to play as a forward and in bare feet, since during the post-war period in Germany, money was short and football boots the last thing you needed. In 1958, he moved to Bayern Munich and made his debut at just 18. He'd already played for Germany's national youth team. Detmar Kramer was one of his first coaches. Nothing was easy for him. Although he had a lot of talent, he had to work very hard, much harder than people would imagine. His main feature was discipline and a very professional approach. He was 20 when he played in his first World Cup in England in 1966. And although he'd only made his debut for the national team a year earlier, in the tournament he surprised everyone with his self-confidence and skill. But with his style of play, he didn't just confuse the opponents. Even the Germans needed some time to get used to his way of playing. In the mid-60s in Germany, we played so-called kick-and-run football. All they wanted to see was a player who sweats and fights. But my game was different, more technique-orientated. As a result, I was accused of being too soft and too arrogant and not taking the game seriously enough. It took them a while before they understood my game. In the early years, Beckenbauer played in midfield for the national team, although his regular position with Bayern was sweeper. His goal here against the Soviet Union opened the door to the final for West Germany. And in the final, they faced hosts England. Beckenbauer had the special task of marking Bobby Charlton. He didn't like that at all. When you have the task of marking someone, in this case it was Bobby Charlton, it's impossible to develop your own game because for 90 minutes you're chasing another player. For that reason it was a mentally and above all physically tough job to mark Bobby Charlton. In 1966 he was the best player in the world and I was young with little experience. But I think I did the job quite successfully. At least he didn't score. But in extra time, it was Hurst who was rewarded by a Russian linesman with the most controversial goal in World Cup history. It's a goal! It's a goal! All the Germans go mad at the referee! West Germany were eventually beaten 4-2, but for Franz Beckenbauer, who scored four goals in six matches, the World Cup in England was a personal triumph and his big breakthrough. When he returned to Germany, he was voted Player of the Year for the first time and signed his first contract to make TV commercials. Wir testen Franz Beckenbauer. Wie viel Kraft steckt hinter seinen Schüssen? Wir wollen es genau wissen. 114 Kilo. From then on, he was known as the Kaiser, and a legend was born. Bayern Munich played a friendly in Vienna. Afterwards, the sponsor, an insurance company, invited us for dinner. 
In the lobby, they had this plastic statue of Kaiser Franz Joseph, the Austrian Kaiser. A photographer asked me to stand next to the statue, and he took a photo. But when the photo was released, everybody called me Kaiser Franz. In 1970, Beckenbauer again confronted Bobby Charlton during the World Cup quarter-final. For the second time, they were in direct opposition. After England had gone 2-0 up, Charlton was substituted. Beckenbauer brought Germany back into the game. England lost the match, but Charlton and Beckenbauer have remained friends ever since. World-class player. Class, really. Found time to do what he wanted to do. Made the game look easy. Both sides, great football brain. Um, terrific defensive qualities. Not pretty, there's not much that's wrong with him, actually. The 1974 World Cup in Germany became Kaiser Franz's masterpiece. As captain, it was he who changed the team lineup after the defeat by East Germany. In the end, it was the goal by Gerd Müller, who played alongside Beckenbauer for more than a decade, that won the cup. We had a blind understanding. I could read his intentions. A hard pass meant I had to turn. A soft pass meant he wanted the one too. This worked out most of the time. The 74 World Cup was his greatest honor as a player. But in the mid 70s, he also led Bayern to three successive European Cups. In the late 70s, Beckenbauer reached the lowest point in his career. He was accused of tax fraud. He split up with his wife, and his father died of cancer. After 103 appearances for the national team, he called it a day. Beckenbauer also wanted to leave Bayern, who were in crisis, but he had to personally pay 350,000 Deutschmarks to the club to buy out his own contract. In 1977, a new chapter in his life opened, as American soccer looked for high-profile players to publicize the new league. Beckenbauer signed for New York Cosmos and helped the club to three consecutive titles. I had the best time of my life in the four years I was in New York. There was no pressure. And you know what the Americans are like, always friendly and happy. So I got to know a totally new lifestyle and a new approach to life in general. Looking back to those days, I have to say that this was the most significant time in my life. In 1980, he returned to Germany, this time to Hamburg, where he played for two more years and won another title. His skills hadn't deserted him, but age was catching up. It was time to slow down and take things a bit easier. It was then that he discovered his second big passion, golf. The Kaiser retired from playing, but not from the game. Two years later, he had a new title as he took over the national squad. After gentle persuasion, I became the German national coach, although everybody knew that I didn't have a license, so they had to invent a new name for me. Instead of Bundestrainer, they called me Team Chef. Without a license, Beckenbauer led his team to an unexpected final in Mexico. But West Germany lost 3-2 to a far superior Argentine side. '86 was my first World Cup as team chef, and of course I made a lot of mistakes. I thought, for instance, that I had to get involved in everything, but it was a learning process. In Mexico, and four years later, in 1990, I didn't make the same mistakes I made in Mexico. I think for your authority as a coach, it's a big advantage to have been a player as well. It's also really important to be honest with the players because they're intelligent and see your mistakes immediately. But the main thing you need as a coach is luck. 
Und dann, was noch dazu kommt, man braucht Glück. Football Mundial, we travel to North.